The average person gets rid of approximately 130 grams of poop every day, maybe twice that much if they've had Taco Bell. Seven and a half billion of us on Earth, that's a literal mountain of human poop every day. Yet most of us get to pretend it doesn't exist, all thanks to an invention that has improved health and quality of life more than any other in humanity's history. Bears do it in the woods, whales do it in the ocean, and 2.4 billion of us don't do it in a toilet. Dysentery, typhoid, parasites, and other infections lead to hundreds of thousands of deaths every year, all because one in three people alive in 2017 don't have access to toilets and latrines. From on top of our porcelain thrones, we've left a lot of our species drowning in feces. Nearly a billion people still defecate out in the open, in street gutters, open water, or in the woods. Thousands of years ago, we all did it that way. But as we developed agriculture and settled into towns, poop started piling up. Around 5,000 years ago, Neolithic villagers constructed the first known toilets at Skara Bray. At the same time, many houses in Mahenjo-Daro featured toilets complete with drains. People washed their poop into sewers that emptied into the Indus River. It'd still be thousands of years before we linked germs to disease, but avoiding filth has deep evolutionary roots. Bodily Excretions, death, and rotten smells can be signs of danger or disease, triggering our innate sense of disgust. This biological instinct ended up in the moral codes of many religions, like this passage from the Old Testament, instructing the Hebrews to do their exodus in a holy fashion. Roman society was pretty comfortable with caca. At one point, Rome had 144 public toilets, long open benches that emptied into the Cloaca Maxima, a sewer system that carried waste to the Tiber River. But the vast majority of Romans simply pooped in a pot and threw it into the street. As waste and disease piled up, Romans pointed to the stink as the cause of sickness. After the Roman Empire faded away, this connection between bad air and bad health persisted, clogging up toilet in innovation for more than a thousand years. During medieval outbreaks like the plague, doctors wore long pointed masks like this one, filled with perfumes and aromatic herbs to cleanse the air, which they thought was the cause of disease. Now they were wrong, but this obsession with stink would change the world in ways that no one saw coming. Contrary to popular belief, Thomas Crapper didn't invent the flush toilet. That honor goes to John Harrington. His Ajax device emptied the bowl with water from an overhead tank. But flush toilets didn't catch on until 1775, when Alexander Cummings revolutionized the way we poo by adding a water-filled S-trap to block explosive and supposedly disease-causing sewer gas from rising up the pipes, the same basic toilet design we still use today. During the Industrial Revolution, most people's business still ended up in streets and cesspools, and the growing population was too big a load for London sewers. By the mid-1800s, the city was literally overflowing with crap, and with crap comes cholera, an infection from bacteria whose toxins basically cause all the water in your body to pour out of your butt in the form of diarrhea, death by dehydration. Cholera hit London in 1854. Instead of that old bad air theory, a doctor named John Snow believed cholera was transmitted by drinking water tainted with sewage. Snow's map of cholera cases clustered around a water pump. When he removed the water pump's handle, new cholera cases fell. Soon after, London enclosed its sewers and diverted waste downstream of London. But doctors wouldn't totally accept Snow's ideas for nearly 50 years. The Great Depression saw an expansion of sewage treatment plants and modern toilet paper. And this is basically the sanitation system we have today, where magical chairs make nasty things disappear, out of sight, out of smell, and out of mind. Now it's no three seashells, but we've come a long way. This privileged pooping existence lets us keep something else out of mind. The 2.4 billion people who still don't have toilets. Nearly 800,000 children under five still die every year from diarrhea, more than AIDS, more than malaria. That's an Airbus A380 full of children crashing every six hours. It's estimated last year poor sanitation cost the global economy $260 billion due to illness, loss of income, and years of life lost. Worse, women suffer these impacts disproportionately to men. In 2007, readers of the British Medical Journal voted modern sanitation as the number one medical advance since 1840. Not antibiotics, not vaccines, toilets and clean water. And we have made 
progress. Since 1990, 14% more people have access to sanitation. Many fewer are dying, but fewer is not zero. With a little effort, we can wipe this problem from the earth. On the TV show The Brady Bunch, their bathroom didn't even have a toilet. Pooping is so taboo, it was literally invisible. We can't even talk about it. It's no coincidence that many of our worst swear words involve defecation. In her book, The Big Necessity, Rose George writes, how a society disposes of its human excrement is an indication of how it treats its humans too. Everybody poops, and every person who is born should be able to do it safely. Stay curious. And please, always wash your hands when you're done. Hey everyone, as always, thank you for watching and learning with us. This week's video was a stinky but important subject, and it was brought to you thanks to the support of Bill and Melinda Gates. For years, Bill and Melinda Gates have supported efforts around the world to make people healthier and make their lives better through innovation, education, and investing in projects to build a better future. And it's working! Since 1990, an estimated 122 million children's lives have been saved thanks to things like better nutrition, family planning, economic opportunities, and vaccines. Here's some proof. In 1988, there were more than 350,000 cases of polio. Last year, only 34. Things have gotten a lot better, and one day soon, that number can be and will be zero. But whether it's bringing toilets to 2.4 billion people or erasing those last few cases of polio, progress only happens when the privileged pay attention. Go to GatesLetter.com to read Bill and Melinda Gates' annual letter and find out all the ways life has and will continue to improve for the world's poorest. I'll see you next time.